Uh, I grew up in uh, Oak Park, Illinois. It's on the west side of Chicago. It's a west suburb. And my first interest in sports came with uh, the sport of swimming. And then I think it was in my junior year of high school that I really began to excel in sports with the long jump and the high hurdles and led me on to the University of Arkansas where I became a three-time All-American in track. So I really started considering the military for two reasons. One, uh, my wife and I were just getting married and I had no job. <laughs> and the second reason was uh, I wanted to continue to run track and field. I thought that I really had a good opportunity to make either uh, the 1992 or 1996 Olympic Games. And the United States Army had a program, the United States Army's World Class Athlete Program. I went to the All Army Track and Field Camp and actually qualify for the Army's world-class athlete program out of that camp. And I fully expected to go and have served my three years as a soldier athlete in order to make or try to make uh, an Olympic team. But what happened was Saddam Hussein raised his ugly head and uh, I was diverted to uh, a field artillery unit and wound up uh, spending seven months in the desert. Our unit really became very close-knit uh, because you have to have uh, y your buddies back uh, in, in battle and you have to trust your training. I think that you also find that there are, are no atheists in foxholes. Uh, folks do a lot of praying when they're, when they're in the desert and, and, and the bullets start, start uh, whizzing by. So here I am, this, this, uh, this world-class athlete that gets uh, derailed in my dreams and, and serves in the Operation Desert Shield Desert Storm. I come back literally unscathed and on May 17th, 1994, I go across a hurdle while I'm training for the World Class Athlete Program again and then my left leg hyperextends, severing the popliteal artery and subsequently ending my Olympic dreams for good. So the decision that I had to come up with, what the doctor gave me, he gave me two options. He said, we've cleaned out a lot of your uh, leg, your gastrocnemius muscle and your ankle, uh, and you're gonna be left pretty much with a fused foot uh, and use a walker or a wheelchair to get around with your mobility, or you can take option number two, which is an amputation. The best option for me really was I wanted to be mobile, and the, uh, the artificial leg was going to help me be mobile. So the, the decision was pretty, easy for me to make, uh, and it was just time for life to uh, move on. My father and I, we try to take the word accident out of the injury because was it an accident or was it actually fate that happened? Because when I look back on it now and I see all the things that have transpired in my life, if that didn't happen, these other things may not have happened. My father was, was right when he, when he said that, you know, this is something that's going to impact a lot of people. So just keep your head up and keep your faith. You will find that uh, there will be a lot of opportunities here, not just only for yourself, but you will have opportunities come for other people that are coming behind you that have these difficult situations. I think I realized I could be an athlete again uh, sometime probably about a, a year or two after the point of injury. I had separated from service, uh, med medically retired, and that's when I first heard about the Paralympic Games. All this swimming that I was doing for physical therapy, I was getting faster and faster in the water, and I wound up going to the Paralympic swim trials and actually making the Paralympic team and competed in, in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm, on, I'm watching closed circuit television from the swim venue. And as I'm watching closed circuit television, I'm watching track and field go off, and I've never seen an amputee above the knee like myself running leg over leg uh, down a long jump runway. And then it's, I said to myself, why am I not out there on the track and field running when I've done this for the better part of my life where I know what this sport is all about? Why am I in this swimming pool? And that was the beginning of the process for me to have an artificial leg made for running. As an athlete, I was in the Atlanta Games in 1996 and in Sydney, Australia in 2000 and won the silver medal in Sydney. 
And then in 2004, I, became an, I was an administrator with the United States Olympic Committee, U.S. Paralympics Division, and went to this, the, uh, the Athens Games, went to Torino in, in 2006, and then went to uh, Beijing, China in 2008 as an administrator. Part of my job is working with the VA and uh, trying to provide support at the Winter Sports Clinic or the National Veterans Summer Games and really trying to make sure that veterans understand the opportunities that they have. So the injury opened up a lot of doors and, and now I'm in a position to where I can actually give back and help other people's dreams and aspirations towards the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games be achieved.